We're done here. Set course for the set of Avatar 2. I have had some mixed feelings of the original 2009 Avatar movie, and they were naturally carried over in going to see this 2022 sequel. Basically, what the first one was could be best described as dances with smurfs, as South Park put it, where Earth in the future was so depleted from its natural resources that the humanity had to look for new ones from the stars. They found the first one in the moons of Pandora and made avatars of the native population, aka the Navi, in order to approach them in a civilized and diplomatic way. Or I assume that was the original intention, before the plot forgot all about that, and instead focused on some form of raritanium or something like that, that was worth a lot of money, that essentially has no value in a post-apocalyptic earth you're trying to survive in. Unfortunately, one of the key people in using those Navi avatars died, and his job was so given to his brother Jake, who instead of doing what he was supposed to do, decided to go all And because of that, he decided to go AWOL to live with the Navi. Which basically justified all the villain's motivations then to do all the villainous things they ended up doing. All because Jake didn't do his damn job in helping the humans and the Navi reach communicative terms to find a common ground to negotiate peacefully. Which then led to openly attacking the Navi because the humans desperate not to die in a polluted and dying earth grew too impatient to not wait for results anymore. Long story short, Jake and the Navi pushed the humanity at the brink of extinction out of Pandora's moon and sent them away by being all, have fun dying out on Earth! And that was pretty much the story of the 2009 Avatar movie. Outside of that story, the movie is better described as a visual spectacle or as a tech demo for the 3D technology that became a thing around the time. And in that sense, Avatar 2009 pretty much did its job better than Jake did, while also making back its budget about Ralla 12 times. That pretty much gave the director James Cameron all the freedom to do whatever sequels and prequels he wanted to do, and for some reason it took him over a decade to make. I was under the impression that he had started writing the stories of these movies all the way in the 70s as proven by this very early concept art. James Cameron doesn't do what James Cameron does for James Cameron. James Cameron does what James Cameron does because James Cameron is... James Cameron. Anyway, about this new movie, it is set however long it takes for Jake and his Navi waifus kids to grow up to become teenagers, and the villainous humans who were sent back to die on Earth to come try do this thing again. Also, the previous antagonist of the previous movie, who I'm just going to call Stephen Lang's character, is revived in a lab-created avatar of a Navi body, and I feel like he was the most interesting character that this movie movie should have focused on more, as he was essentially a resurrected character who was given a second chance at life while being or becoming aware of the actions that led to his death. And so Stephen Lang's character is set to get revenge against Jake for being a filthy traitor who had one job. Then after his resurrection is realized by Jake, he decides to do what he does best, aka run away from what responsibilities he has with his family that he has made with his Navi waifu, which includes two boys, a girl, and an adult the reason to keep Sigourney Weaver in this movie even after her character died in the previous film. They also have an adopted human boy, who was too young to be sent to Earth after the events of the first movie, and is wearing a breathing mask to be able to survive in the native atmosphere. That boy is caught by Stephen Lang's character, who is also confirmed to have been his father, and is pretty much the reason why Jake decides to take the rest of the, his family to live in a sunny version of Innsmouth. As forest people, they have a hard time and a learning curve in getting them to adapt to being water people, but they do get 
there eventually. Otherwise, this is a very long movie, as it is 3 hours and 10 minutes long, minus the end credits. And I don't want to talk too much about the plot. The movie did not feel that long once the plot started to actually move and advance towards something. And I can totally recognize that after the setups of the first film, there is a more cohesive story that James Cameron has been wanting to tell. Unfortunately, James Cameron is a filmmaker and not a comic book or a TV persona, since this very large story would have probably been better told in a different format in small appetizers coming one at a time. I was told some time ago by someone that the best storytelling method is to hang on to an audience, is to keep them hungry for more, and James Cameron seems to have missed the point of that because he seems to be trying to force feed his story to us. Essentially, if done right, this movie could have been a very engaging season of television or an anime where it could have been told with better pacing. That being said, I recognize the potential in the story that this new movie was trying to do. Especially with Stephen Lang's character, and I'm more interested in seeing his development after he was resurrected in a form of his enemy and had to learn to understand his enemy better in his new form. If he was smart enough to bring up and call out how everything he is fighting against Jake is all Jake's fault for not doing his one job because he got more interest to get some knobby instead. His name is James, James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. No budget too steep, no sea too deep. Who's that? It's him, James Cameron. And that is pretty much my quick picker review on Avatar Way of the Water. The CGI in it looked pretty, the storytelling was flawed enough to be interesting while leaving a couple of things unexplained, the family dynamic was well represented while the villain was more interesting, and I'm able to recognize the potential there was in it. It is not a perfect movie by any chance, and I probably would have not gone to see it if it wasn't for one of my real life friends asking me to come watch it with him. It is definitely a visual spectacle best experience in the theaters, but the 3D phenomenon in movies seems to have taken a back seat from what it was from when the first movie came out. I don't know if this was the case elsewhere, but me and my friend went to see a 3D showing, which was being shown at the same time as a 2D showing at the same theater location, and the 3D showing we went to see was in a smaller theater while the 2D showing was happening in a bigger one. I'm not sure how to look at what the 3D movie experience has become when that is the case. Anyway, feel free to comment what you think about Avatar Way of the Water down below, share the video if it feels worth sharing, and feel free to subscribe for other videos I have planned to do in the future. Dinging the bell is also an option if you want to chat with me during random gameplay streams, and may your heart be your guiding key.